And welcome everyone to Carrick's Car Wreck with Ray from Maryland, Episode 1. I am the aforementioned. The interview you're about to hear is a member of the Fans of Trunk Nation fan page and a pretty regular caller on Eddie's show, Trunk Nation. I think you'll find his story and our conversation quite interesting. I'm speaking of the one and only Derek Pierce, a.k.a. Derek from New Mexico. I had Derek on for approximately 35 minutes and really enjoyed our chat. Now, I must apologize for the technical difficulties on my end. I didn't realize that my mic had reverted to the default settings. Therefore, my voice is quite low and Derek's isn't, but I will have this corrected for future episodes. That being said, I give you my conversation with Derek from New Mexico. I hope you guys enjoy it. And my first guest on the first episode is a guy that's on the fans of Trunk Nation fan page. We've talked many times as far as messaging and stuff like that. And I think the best way to intro this guy is by saying, hello, Sebastian. Hello, Carrot Top. Hello, Richard Christie. And hello, Derek from New Mexico. Derek, how are you, man? Hey, how you doing, Ray? Pretty good, man. And you? I'm doing well, man. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks, man. That that that, that, that was an awesome, uh, um, an awesome intro that you got in there. That's that's pretty cool. <laughs> well, that's sort of your trademark, I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, that, that, I always try to keep it exactly like that, but I just say it real, really quick, so then that way, uh, whenever uh, Eddie, you know, hears my voice, that he's he's like, oh, okay, I, you know, what I mean, kind of like like I know this guy, you know what I mean? So I think a lot of uh, the regular callers that uh, they get in there. And you know that that really uh, give you know give something to the show. Everybody knows you know like their their tagline or right. where they're from. You know what I mean? Basically, exactly right. Well, the reason that you and I have been mass messaging back and forth a lot lately, and I thought immediately if I'm gonna you know do this thing, that you would be a great guest because of your story. And if my research is correct and things that I've seen that you have stated, you've been to, what, a thousand concerts or more? Um, it, 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 you know what? It's around there. I don't have an official count because, um, you know, um, and this is kind of starting, you know, like a little bit of the story or whatever. Back in the night, uh, you know, I, I've been going to concerts. My, my very first concert was... Uh, I think it was in 86, and it was Judas Priest with, um, there was a couple other bands opening, but I re remember um, um, that it was Raven was one of them. And the oh, reason wow. why I remember that. Been, that, would, that would have been the Turbo Tour, correct? Yeah, yeah, exactly. The Turbo Tour, yes, sir. And that was in Albuquerque over here, over here at this uh, this place called Tingley Coliseum. And I don't even think they, I think they do concerts there only for uh, whenever they have this uh, the the state fair over there. They, you know, they have you know like a whole week uh, weeks worth of uh, concerts, and they they hold them there. But other than that, um, there's another venue in Albuquerque. Now it's an outdoor one. You know, like you know for you know whenever the the bands do the the summer shed tour, you know, as it's called or whatever, right. they usually hit that place and then there's another small um kind of a theater spot downtown which um you know like it's basically like which in any of the other theaters are uh, you know around around america consist of you know i mean where, where they get those bands where there's like three three bands you know on the bill or whatever but anyway but yeah so the, the, you know this is um over there in albuquerque and the reason why i remember raven is because whenever they finished um wacko threw his drumstick out and i actually got caught it i mean it, it fell in front of me and i jumped on it and there was like 10 people trying to get it and i got it and i you know put it down put it down my pants and just took off running you know because i was a little kid you know what i mean so i went to go find my friends because i knew where they were because they were because i was on the floor by myself and my friends were uh, um you know like up in the stands i think they're i don't know probably smoking or whatever you know what i mean but i went and found them and it's funny because you know the house lights go on you know in between bands and um 
you know, I get over there and they're all dry. Hey, where you been? I said, no, nah, I was down there. And, you know, I whip out the drumstick and they're like, oh, look at this fucking dude, man. He, you know, it's his first concert and what happens? He comes away with a drumstick, you know what I mean? Because those guys had been concert goers for a while, you know, and they don't really come back with stuff like that. And I, I'm over here, you know, bright eyed and bushy tailed, you know, going, you know, just waving my, my drumstick around. So, yeah, so, but, um, you know, so anyway, in the 90s when I started uh, working concerts, that's well, when that I did. Was gonna, that was going to lead into my next question because you did yeah, work, yeah, work in the industry in, in some capacity. Was, was it like rigging or what was your thing? Um, no, actually, it didn't have it didn't have anything actually to do with um, like for during uh, with, with touring production. Mm -hmm. it, we we actually we um, it was a group of us of about six that were just friends. And what we did is we we had our own detailing company um, um, here in our here in our little city here in uh, southern New Mexico. Uh, oh, okay. And it was. Yeah, and it was caught, and we 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 named it the Showshine Crew. Well, okay, actually, I'm sorry, I was mis uh, They they started it before I even got in. So they had, you know, I guess they were like little kids um, trying to get into concerts in El Paso, and for some reason, and you know, this is this is their story. What they told me, you know, what I mean, like one of my, he, and he's one of my best friends still to this day. Um, you know, he told me the story at the time. He said that. Whenever they were kids, they're always trying to, you know, they were broke and they couldn't afford to get into concerts, and they're always trying to sneak in, like through the backstage area, to get into concerts. You know, they they kept on getting caught and getting kicked out, and then still trying to get back in. And I think um, it was one of the drivers one time said, "Hey, man, you know, I guess he told him said, hey, like like why don't you guys, you know, he's like, oh here, he's uh, he's like, you guys come you guys come over here and um, you know clean clean the uh, clean the my my bus rooms, and I'll give you guys you know p tickets or whatever." And then you, so he kind of like led them in the way, say, hey, you know what I mean? Like you guys could do that. You know what I mean? You guys put together. And I was like, wow, that's cool. So, you know, my friend had told me the concert that he had been working. And I told him, I said, hey, dude, I said, if you ever need any help, you know, I'm, I'm down. I love all the music, you know, whatever. I'm down for whatever. So, you know, there was one time, um, the very first time, it, this is going to be funny because, you know, like the genre that we listen to as far as the Eddie Trunk show is, you know, like rock and, uh, you know, or, or hard rock, heavy metal, whatever, right? Yep. My very first concert that I worked, get, get, guess what it was, Ray? I can't wait to hear it. Yeah, it was Color Me Bad. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, 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 and see, and what's funny, too, is, you know, he told me these stories about, yeah, dude, like, we were kicking back with anthrax and, you know, doing all this. I was like, okay, cool. So I don't know if that was like a test. He's like, you know what? I bet you they're probably like, let's test him. You know what I mean? Like, let's see if he's really down to, like, actually work or if he's just in it just for, like, for the rock so people. You, you know what I mean? So you didn't get to jump right in on, say, Slayer. It was more like, I want to sex you up type music. Yeah, well, no, and see, and, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. But see, the thing was, is at the at that time we had a really kick ass um, concert promoter here in Las Cruces. Her name was uh, her name was Barbara Hubbard, and everybody called her Mother Hubbard, right? You know what I mean? So she had that little that that little nickname, and um, you know, we have a um, a, a university over here. It's called uh, New Mexico State University, the Aggies. And, um, you know, we have a pretty decent basketball team. We, we usually make it into the, the big dance every year. And, um, but anyway, you know, so we, so we have, um, you know, one, one of their arenas where they play basketball. And then right next to it is where the football, um, you know, team plays right there. So, you know, it's a pretty decent, it's a pretty decent little, uh, you know, it gets packed, you know, during the, during the fall time, you know, whenever. The students come back but anyway so yeah so we had a really great promoter and she brought, dude she brought everything here well, so yeah, i mean i'm talking about you, every genre when you, when you say everything that's that's kind of the next thing i wanted to talk to you about i know from just the stuff that you know you put out there on the fan page and you and i messaging you've met everybody you've probably met as Many celebrity musicians, famous musicians, as Eddie Trunk has, you're not necessarily friends with them, but was it that job that led to your access to everybody? Because I saw pictures of you with Lemmy and the guys in Metallica. And by the way, when I saw, I was I, I was envious as, wow, look at Derek go. But then when I saw the picture of you in Hetfield, the almighty James Hetfield, I was yeah. like, okay, now I'm jealous. You know, so it's like, uh, yeah, yeah. So did that? Uh -huh. did that yeah, no, and that's uh, did that gig go that kind of went on uh, to do. Is that what got you all the access to all these musicians at first? 
Oh yeah, exactly. That's that, I mean that's that's directly where it came from. And literally that very first concert. Um, and you know, and the, the, and you know, just to put this out there. You know, um, I'm I'm. I'm I'm a lover of 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 all genres, you know what I mean? Kind, yeah, yeah. I guess kind of like the way Eddie is, but he but but he's more into you know the heavy metal stuff like that. But I I actually liked. I, I mean, when I was a kid, I still have my my original boombox from like 1981. Oh, you wow. know the one I used to lug around when I was a kid, and I and, yeah, and and I actually used to break dance. So I was there at the beginning of when rap even started. Yeah, I knew you know you what I mean. And I like I it. You know what I mean? To tell you the truth. Yeah. It, yeah, you know what I mean exactly. So you know, for me, um, just just getting to the concert and getting inside there and having that actual feeling of, um, you know, it's not really being above anybody. You know, and I wasn't, you know, and I wasn't trying to be because we had, you know, backstage passes or whatever. Mm-hmm. It was just like more of the feeling of being behind the scenes. You yeah. know what I mean? You're like, wow, this is freaking crazy. Like, like I didn't know this happened. You know what I mean? Back here, or oh, this is the way that happens. You know what I mean? So, I, like we like. We used to be able to get in there. You know, a lot of people go to concerts, you know, they don't, they don't even really think they go in there, they see the stage, they don't really see um, what the whole deal is about the production of it going up, you know what I mean? And how crazy the workers do from, like, literally, you know what I mean, five or six in the morning once the trucks get there, how much how much work those guys do. And over here at this little, at the basketball arena, there's a big slope that where they have to go, where they have to take the uh, the equipment down, and they have, like, little, like, vehicles or whatever like with big old tires that where they would um stack like the you know the the travel boxes or whatever you know the big the big equipment Mm -hmm. and they would take them down like a big snake and they would have to like push it together and keep it controlled you know what i mean it it, it was crazy and just watching basically just watching a stage go from from nothing to all the way to like right at showtime you know what i mean it's just like it's crazy whenever you get to see that whole perspective and just yeah and then seeing all the the musicians you've met man and i've met a you know a hand couple handfuls of them but you've met everyone when real quick to switch gears a little bit when did eddie trunk come on your radar was it with that metal show or uh um no it was actually before whenever he was talking about um his days on vh1 classic whenever he would uh okay yeah yeah. like whenever he'd be like 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 a guest bj yeah, like yep. he had his, like he had his, uh, like like he had his rock. I mean, like you know, like he had his video segment or whatever. Yeah, he would I used do to be inter- into, he would do uh, you know, MTV. There. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And then so whenever and because uh, over here in New Mexico, I you know I wasn't I didn't really know of or um, either that or got the syndication from his New York. Well, of course, you know his yeah, radio yeah. stuff like that. So that's all. The, yeah, you know what I mean. So, so I wouldn't know anything about any of his, you know, like actual terrestrial radio stuff. I just saw him on TV. I think he was on there, and um, that other guy, uh, this other VJ, his name is Matt Pimfield. I'm not oh, sure yeah, if you Matt, remember him Matt, from MTV. He still, he still does yeah, yeah. Radio. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so see those two always. Whenever they came on, I'd be like, oh man, these guys play some kick-ass videos. You know what I mean? Or they have some interesting stuff to say. So that's a reason why I, I would always tune into them. And then whenever I did see that. You know that metal show for the first time. I'm like, what the hell is this? This is badass. You know what I mean? I'm like, they're literally, yeah. It was so cool that you know to have that. And I really wish that they would um, release those out, like on even DVDs. I guarantee those things would sell. You know what I mean? Like a box set or something like that, just to have all those. Yeah, they won't release anything, and they own the rights to it, so it's definitely out of uh, Trunks' hands. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I wish Viacom or whoever owns it would just. You know what I mean? Release it to him or yeah, let just somebody else collecting have it. And dust. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I knew of Eddie Trunk because I would read magazines and things like that back in the day, and I'd see his name and and he had been in the I guess the New York New Jersey market for a long time. But yeah, I didn't get introduced to him either until VH1 and that metal show and every and of course when that metal show premiered, I was like. Oh yeah, this is me. Three geeks talking about hard rock and heavy metal. That this is me. You know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and I was there, you know, faithfully all the time, just like I am with this show now. And um, now, I wanted to ask you this, and this may be a tough question for you. Out of all the rock slash metal people you've met, what's the one you put on the pedestal? 
Because, I mean, you've met them all, dude. I've seen the pictures. I know a little bit about your history, a little bit about your story. If you had to pick one, which had to, would have to be very tough for you, who would it be? Uh, you know what? There, um, dang. Um, yeah, I figured it'd be tricky for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I, you know, because cause there's a couple that are right there at the very top, and you know, the, and there's a there there there's for the most part, you know, they they were all really cool, but um, as far as n- nostalgia part, since maybe, and I'm kind of biased to this because since I was like crushed hard whenever uh whenever Eddie Van Halen died, right, yeah. and um. So it, I think either uh, the, the 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 two ones that are that are tied at the top, but I'm probably gonna teeter a little bit more more towards um, Eddie would be Eddie and Ozzy, and you know, and I I you know whenever I started um, working and started meeting people, I'm 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 the type of dude and always have been that I've never really been starstruck, you know what I mean? Because I I don't like doing that because it makes um, you know, because to me, in my mind, they're they're a person too. You know what Absolutely. I mean? So you like, so if I was famous, I wouldn't want somebody just running up on me and just crying and all this stuff. I'm like, what is going on here? And well, you know, and that's the reason I, why. I, well, unless it's a hot chick. Oh yeah, 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 exactly. You know what I mean? Of course, I, I, I have my weak, like, you know, my I have my weaknesses too. But yeah, but you know what I mean? But but you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Just like, yeah, oh my course. god, like, hey, just yeah, calm down. Yeah, you know anytime, what I mean? It's like anytime so, I've approached. Uh, uh, somebody I admire in that world, I always just say, hey, man, how's it going? You know, I'm not going to do this. Oh, my God, you know. <laughs> yeah, so 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 to answer your question, it pro- it'd probably be uh, whenever I whenever I got to uh, take a picture with the uh, with Van Halen on uh, for the for, for the uh, for for a lawful carnal knowledge tour mm-hmm. um, over here in El Paso. You know, when we walked in that room, you know, and we, and we didn't have, uh, we actually didn't even have passes on that one, but we knew the bus driver and we, you know, he gave us tickets or whatever. And, but, you know, he, we were kind of like back there in the, in the backstairs area because we started to get, get to know too a lot of the, uh, the security people. So we could kind of, we, we could kind of bend the rules a little bit on like where, like where, where, where we could be, you know what I mean? But, but, but we wouldn't push the boundaries, you know what I mean? We'd be like, we, we know our, we know our places, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So anyway, so we were back there kind of in this area and the bus driver was like, Hey, what are you guys doing? We're like, no, nah, we're just kicking back. He's like, Hey, so I'll come over here real quick. And he like shoved us into this room and they're like, um, yeah, what is this? And it was, you know, it was Van Halen right there. We're like, what the hell? It's badass. So, you know, they came up, you know, the pro- the production people just said, hey, you know, everybody get ready when you get up there. You know, you're just going to jump in real quick. We're going to take a, you know, professional picture of ours. Then you guys move, you know what I mean? Just go ahead and take off or whatever. And we're like, all right, cool. So we actually jumped in there and I was, and, and to today, to this, to this day, Ray, I I and we, I don't know where that picture is because we never got. Yeah, because um, I was, I was getting ready to ask you about that because that definitely would have been, definitely would have been one I had would have seen from you. I would think because I mean, he, he, oh, dude, that I mean, I, I, I'd have, huh? <laughs> King Edward. Yes, yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> dude, I, I was like three people from Edward. You know what I mean? You're, and you're just kind of like. And, and you know what? When, when whenever we got in there, you know, you could say hi to them or whatever. It's not just hey, just get up there. You know, we're like, oh shit, yeah, oh yeah, you know, what's going on or whatever. And then like, okay, yeah, you know, everybody get together, you know, cool like that. But they weren't just up. Get in there, get out. You know what I mean? And so <laughs> right. and you got to just speak a few words or whatever. And I was like, bro. And my friend, he's like, he he told us whenever we were in line, he's like, I'm getting right not right next to Eddie. I don't care. So I was like, you know what? I, I, to me, I was happy because I was in the presence of Van Halen. Of course, you know, as it is. Yeah. So I'm like, dude, this is badass enough. I, I'm, a, I don't care where I am. You know what I mean? Just put me in the picture. So and and Ray, this is the truth. I, you know, back in the day, I had a, a the, um, you know, the 35 millimeter camera. You know, that I always kept with me. And going on, you know, going up there to go get take a picture, I gave it to the bus driver who got us in, and I said, hey. You know, once they take the professional one, can you take one with with my camera, right? Mm-hmm. So, so I asked him that, and then so when we went up there, you know, I was already assuming we're going to take one right here, and then we're going to take one more r- real quick one, you know, with my camera. So they took the professional one, and then I was like kind of waiting, and then you know, so they kind of like disbanded, and, you know, so we had to like take off, and I, I said, I told him, I said, did you take it? He's like, oh damn, I forgot. I'm like, 
Oh, oh man. So right at that moment is whenever I turned around and I took that quick picture of Van Halen with cuz cuz we were the last group. And so he was taking pictures with um with I guess maybe some of the production people like from Warner Brothers or whatever. It was somebody there cuz they had like Warner Brothers passes on. Right. And um if you I'm not sure if you've seen that picture if I posted it or I mean I can send it to you, but yeah. um in that picture is the one that I took of my camera and you know they're just kind of like you know, it's Van Halen, and then there's like two. I think some. I posted it up there, and somebody said that 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 one of them was that was um, Sammy Sammy Hagar's first wife, if I'm not mistaken. And then maybe somebody else in production. I don't know something, but there's there's like three women up there. You know what I mean? They're like professional. You know, like look. You know, they're dressed nice. You know what I mean? So yeah, you, yeah. you could tell there was somebody. But anyway, yeah. So that's the only picture that I have. But. um you know, and I have another little story that was from, if you look in that picture, they have these little Van Halen uh, promo posters that they always had up on the walls in the backstage area. And, you know, back in the day, you know, I used to see people just go take them off. And I'm like, well, shit. So I, you know, so I actually, I, I have one of those and I still have it with me to this day. You know, like what, what, one of those promo uh, um, pictures that, 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 were, that was hung up in the backstage area. Man, but yeah, so that was very cool. cool. And, and you're you're just a couple years younger than I am, a few years younger than me. How old are you, Derek? I'm uh, 52, getting ready to be 53 in July. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm 55, I'll be 56 in October. So I knew we were all in that same age range. But uh, yeah. it, it, can I get into a little bit of your personal story? Yeah, yeah. You don't mind? Yeah, no, not a problem. Huh? Okay, because I recently found out and... I'm so glad you're here rocking with me and everyone else. You're a cancer survivor, correct? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I had a, I posted a, a pretty good little, um, you know, it was kind of like an introduction thing. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. I, 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 I thought that it would kind of catch on. I mean, it, you know, it didn't, I, I wasn't doing it to, you know, for attention or whatever. I just no, said, hey, you know what, I thought not. that I it know, would be a pretty I, cool I, little thing. I know thing. you well enough to know that you're, you're just, you love this music and this world and you never come off like that you always come off very sincere and gracious yeah yeah exactly so yeah so i did you know i posted on there um it, yeah it was in um it was in 2017 that i um i started getting um some pains in my upper back a little bit and then in my uh in my lower stomach and um you know, I thought, you know, I, I didn't really think anything of it or whatever. And I had never really been to the doctor unless like something was wrong. You know what I mean? Like, but I, you know, if something was wrong, I would go no matter what. I'm not going to just be like, nah, it's not, you know, but this one, I was kind of like, well, you know, I started having those pains. And then um, my family or my mom, you know, since everybody in my family had their gallbladders taken out, that that's like one of the first symptoms. Right. So I went and got a a, a, a scan for it and you know now they told me that you know everything came back and my gall, gallbladder looks good so i still having those i started i still had those pains and it started getting a little bit worse so i finally went to my doctor and he you know he sent me to the um to the gi specialist or whatever and they did an endoscopy and then that's whenever they found that i had a um a tumor in my esophagus wow. you know what i mean so yeah so yeah so that's so basically you know whenever the biopsy came back you know it was it you know came out positive and that was right around August or September of uh, 2017. And then also at during that year too, you know, I, I, I put this, uh, you know, uh, under my story on that one was I started my uh, weight loss. I um, was going to lead into that, but yeah, yeah, yeah. My thunder. <laughs> yeah. Because, that, because it kind of goes um, hand in hand, yeah, you know, you in the story. Like, you lost like uh what, like a hundred pounds or something. It was like it was like 165. I, I literally yeah. like weigh 165 right now, so I lost half my weight. Well, I you know, noticed my, my... that. I noticed that because you know we kind of follow each other, and I noticed in the older pictures, I was like, and then I'm seeing the newer pictures of with you hanging out with musicians, and I'm like, wow, <laughs> this guy. Yeah, exactly. So, you like, know what I mean? Is this guy on the Ozempic or what's going on here? <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's that's what a lot of people um, ask me too. Yeah. And and to tell you, tell you the truth, this is actually the second time, uh, the first time that I had a major weight loss was in the early 2000s, and I did it through the Atkins way, which is pr basically, you know, like no, pretty much no, no carbs, carbs, you know, yeah. back then. Yeah. yeah. So I had lost about 100 pounds back then, and I kept it off for about, Ah, two or three years, and then I just started slacking, and then every, you know, what I mean, then it all basically all came back again, plus more. So anyway, you know, basically, um, at the beginning of 2017, you know, I, 
I, I put my foot down again because I knew that I was going to have uh, high blood pressure and all this stuff like that. So I had to get on those meds for a little bit. But I, so, you know what I mean? Whenever, whenever I'm, I'm the type of person, whenever I put my mind to something, uh, it's going to happen. You know what I mean? So basically I started doing my weight loss at the beginning of 2017. So by the time that I had been diagnosed with um, cancer, I had already been down probably a little bit over 100 pounds at that time. And whenever I went in, uh, started to go for treatments, the doctors over there had told me that that was probably the best thing that I could have done for my oh. for my uh, for my cancer journey was to Absolutely. have that weight loss off. You know what I mean? To be a lot healthier going into the battle Absolutely. instead of being yeah. You know what I mean? So, but anyway, yeah. So I so I I was diagnosed um, you know towards the end of the year and I went in for treatments for chemo and radiation. Um, at the from like September until about November, and then and then the doctors wanted me to go home for about four to five weeks to let my body heal from those treatments, and then to go back in January for my surgery. So that's when I did, and three days after, when my pathology report came out of uh, out of surgery, that's whenever the my sur- or my my my. Uh, my my oncologist told me that I was cancer free, so that was pretty awesome. That's awesome, man. That is so awesome. And your story is just incredible, man. And you're so tenacious and such a go getter. You know, it's like I admire just how involved. Like you're probably the most. You're probably the top com- contributor in in my opinion on the uh, fans of Trunk Nation Eddie Trunk fan page. Because it's like yeah. you're 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 like always excited about this, you know. And I I I love that, and I think yeah. I've told you that too. And yeah, yeah, no, exactly. You know what I mean? And I feel you know when something kind of hits me, it's kind of like well, you know, I jump on my phone real quick and just you know once so then that way I don't forget it. And right. you know, hopefully, and it's almost and the way I take the the Trunk Nation page is almost the way I take. Um, going on live with Eddie, yeah, absolutely. you know what I mean? I like, I don't want to throw, I, I don't want to throw any clunkers out there. You know what I mean? To yeah, kind, yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. Kind, kind of, I guess, I, I guess, as you would say, you mean like in layman's terms, you know, you don't want to throw any clunkers out there. You know, you want to have something that really gets everybody engaged and, you know, talking about it or commenting or just what, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Cause you know, cause whether, whether they agree with me or not, you know what I mean? At least, somebody you know yeah that's that's what it's for it's for discussion you know what i mean like let's talk about it yeah you know and and and, you know i there's always going to be negativity on fan pages and some you know things like that but as far as that fan page goes it's pretty good you know there are going to be a few yeah yeah you know ups and downs and bumps in the road because you know somebody's offended by everything, you know, it's like, whatever. Yes. You yeah, know, exactly. But, but you, or yeah. Or somebody's you, mad because they're, I always look forward ahead. to what you have to say because it's always positive and you know, it's coming from a good place because you're a fan just like the rest of us. And if somebody takes it a certain way, it's just, it's simply ridiculous. You know, there, it's this hypersensitive world we live in and, and I don't know. And I know we're on limited time here, but before I let you go, I asked you about the, you know, person you met thing, but I got to say, you've been to around a thousand concerts. If you had yeah. to pick one, what was your favorite? What was the best one for you? The one that sticks. And I know that's going to be a difficult um, question too. And it better not be color. Well, bad. you know what? It. <laughs> dang, oh, dang. Okay. Well, then, you know, I guess I'm going to have to hang up on you then, man. No, I'm just joking. Um, you know what? It, 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 uh, it, I, you know what? I, I had, I had this, um, a, you know, this questions come up a lot, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because pretty much everybody that knows me, like personally, like even like in town or whatever, you know what I mean? That people here, they're like, you know, they know me and, and they, you know, they know how many people I've met and all this stuff like that backstage, you know, whatever. And they, you know, they always ask me, and this is before this certain concert that, that I'm going to tell you, you know, which is my favorite, you know, this is before that time with, you know, they'd ask me, Hey man, so, you know, so what's your, you know, your app, 
absolute favorite or whatever. And I really didn't have any. I was like, I, you know what? I, I can't really pick one. It's right. like trying to pick one, you know, maybe you're like, like one of your kids, to, you know, to be the favorite or whatever. And, um, you know, I, I would just always kind of tell them maybe like my top three, yeah, you know, this one was up no, there. I'm you know, this hold, one was really I'm great. Holding, I'm but, holding yeah. you to one, Derek. I, 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 you're. Yeah. You're yeah. No, there. no. Yeah, no, and no, and and I do have the answer, and the answer for that one is going to be um, it's Roger Waters. Whenever he did Pink Floyd's "The Wall" oh, okay. in its entirety, yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah. I'm talking about like it, it, you know, and, and you know, I'm sure you or anybody that has any, uh, that has any uh, ever seen the actual the movie "The Wall" and heard the soundtrack, or you know what I mean? Of course, that, I that's am. exactly the way. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly the way the concert was, and that's, you know, and for me, I used to see, um, whenever I think, I'm not sure, like in the 80s or 90s, whenever, I think, uh, whenever Pink Floyd reunited again, and they did the wall, and I think, I think it was like the anniversary of when, the like, the actual, yeah, think, the Berlin went, Wall went down. The, uh... I think a little of the friction was slightly lower between Waters and Gilmore at that point because I know David came out and actually played on one of them. Yeah, exactly. And and I and I remember seeing like parts of it. It was either on MTV because it was kind of a big deal. And I remember seeing them um, at the end of the concert. They were knocking the wall down. You know what I mean? Like the way yeah. in the movie too. And and that's and that's the way exactly the way this concert. Um, ended, you know, granted, I wish, you know what I mean? Gilmore would have been there. That would have been the greatest thing ever, but with Roger Waters doing this and dude, let me tell you the the way, the way he, he, it, I mean, okay. So, you know, at the beginning of the movie, you know, when the, the dad is in the, you know, the trenches or whatever in, at war, right. Yep. And then the airplane comes in and that's when it crashes and that's how it starts the movie. That's exactly the way it started in the concert, like he actually had like a plane coming in on top of like the audience and it hit like the top of the brick, the wall <laughs> and it awesome. like, it like exploded. You know, you kind of freaked out. You're like, what the hell's that's, going on here? That's insane. Yeah. 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 And you, you, you know what I mean? You, you so remember, it, it, and, you remember who played uh pink in, in the movie, right? Oh, um, no, who is it? Bob Geldof, who got together. Oh, Bob Geldof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yep. yeah. okay, yes. Yep. To, to do Live Aid, right? Yes. And he was also yeah. involved with that. But yeah, recent, not... He was also involved with that recent document. Uh, well, he was involved with that We Are the World USA for Africa thing, too, because he was in that documentary that Eddie's been talking about lately. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah and he I've was been, a good, you know, he was I, a really, I, I, you know ambitious humanitarian in philanthropist you know yeah exactly but yeah whenever so whenever people now you know what i mean after that concert when they tell me or when they ask me that i because to me i i explain it i i explain it to them say that was like a um it was like a mixture between like a concert a broadway show and like a or a, you know a musical or something like that because of just the way the way exactly the way it went through um, like the the movie but in a rock sense and then but in a you know I, I and I've never been to like a Broadway show or whatever but right. you know from the stuff that I've seen you know like just clips of others I'm like that's exactly the way this was you know yeah. what I mean so the, it really I mean like it literally blew my mind you know I really I you know and I was drinking beer at the time and I didn't want to leave because I wanted to see what was coming up next it's just like dude this is the craziest thing I've ever seen well you should have so that, you, so you that to me you should have wore a diaper like Richard Christy does when he goes to see uh, his bands. You know that way you wouldn't have. To leave. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, he, well, yeah. So I wouldn't have to get up and go to the bathroom. Exactly. Yeah. Man, it sounds so, like. So, so it, now I know to do that. Like you it, know, it, it encompassed the full experience of all those entities you just talked about. So that's cool. But look, man, I know you're on yeah, limited yeah. time, and you got to get rolling, and I've got to get rolling, and you know, to our busy uh, lives, but I really appreciate you being my first guest, man, and you could be my last. I'll have to see how this shit show plays out. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I actually, you know, and, and, and I do appreciate it. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm actually kind of flattered and honored to be, uh, to be your first guest on there. But yeah, no, you know what? I think, I think if you put it out there, you know, people will like it. And then, you know, if people, you know, if you, if you, uh, 
you know, for other people that have, you know, may have interesting stories or people that you want to, you know, get, you know, get on air too, that'd be pretty awesome. Yeah, you know, my, my, I, 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 you know, I'll, I, my plan is ahead. to interview, you know, some of the people on the fan page that I think I knew you'd have an interesting story because I knew a, a bit about you. So interview a few, and then I'm thinking about some of the local musicians that I'm friends with and I'm friends with a couple of people uh-huh. in tribute bands, maybe grabbing them. Ultimately, I'd like Eddie to come on, but you know, that's the fingers crossed kind of thing. But, um, before- yeah, well, actually, well, well see. See, see, see. The thing you could, the thing you could do is, you know, if you put it on the page, and then, um, you know, like maybe after a couple of uh, interviews, you know, what I mean, like with with me and a couple other people, you know, once it gets a couple on there, maybe when the next or uh, whenever you get on air at that time, you could just mention to him, say, hey, Eddie, you know what I mean? Like I've been doing this little, you know, this little podcast type thing. You know what I mean? You know, check out my interviews if you want on well, the page. I, you know, I, you don't I have would to never, but comment the or thing, nothing. The only thing is there, I wouldn't want to put Eddie on the spot on air so i would maybe bring it up to aj or something to drop him oh yeah yeah that's true that's true you know something yeah like that. that's true you know i wouldn't want to put him on the spot because you know that's not a cool thing yeah yeah you know what yeah because I, I i i remember him saying that you know i mean that people have, have have asked him to be on their podcast and he's kind of like well you know he's like everybody can do it or whatever you know what i mean stuff like that so you know it's, i'm sure it's going to be yeah know, I, I mean and, who knows and, you know what i mean since, Eddie, it's, just, Eddie, since, Eddie, since it's an actual Eddie knows me. I've met him, you know, and, you know, uh-huh. we had a nice little chit chat and you've met Eddie, you know, and just don't, yeah. Really a nice guy. yeah. And he does go on podcasts. He will be a guest uh-huh. on the podcast. So I, I, that's down the road. Let's see how it works out. And, but I really appreciate and want to thank you for being my first guest, Derek. I think your story's amazing. I think you're a great dude. And I know we'll be chatting again soon. And um, thank you so much for doing this, man. Yeah, definitely, man. Not not a problem, dude. Yeah, just said, you know, anytime, just hit me up, and you know, just, you know, I guess granted, uh, you know, our our time difference and you know our our differences in work schedules, but you know, we can always work something out. Not a problem, just like we did today. So absolutely. All right, my friend. I will let you go, and we will chat again soon. All right, cool, Ray. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right, bye, bye, Derek. All right, we'll, all right. We'll talk to you later. Later. And there you have it, my interview with Derek from New Mexico. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And again, I do apologize for my microphone issues, and I promise you that it'll be corrected for any future episodes. Anyway, episode one of Carrick's Car Wreck with Ray from Maryland is in the books, and I'll talk to you guys again soon. Take care.